Hi, this is just a follow up to the previous, uh, I guess, a part one video of just uh, discharging some batteries here, which is in turn a follow up to my main channel video, which was uh, the alkaline battery leakage test. So uh, I've got another set of batteries, 13 different brands, two of each uh, different brand. I'm gonna start out with the Duracell Ultras here, no reason why, just random order. And I'm gonna discharge these ones as well. But of course, the last video was a classic classic example of why you probably shouldn't uh, discharge or charge uh, tons of different batteries in series like that, especially different brands with different capacities and stuff like that, because you can come a gutsa, um, even with just, uh, and you can uh, like reverse uh, charge them. And that's the problem that we had in the uh, previous one. Once uh, certain, once uh, one brand of batteries might have had a slightly less capacity than the others. So they started to reverse charge. So all the other batteries in series started to charge those ones. And yeah, it's, it can really come a gutsa. And, but even with uh, two in series that I'm going to do now. I've got a better uh, battery holder this time. I've got uh, thicker gauge wire going over. I'm still not going to bother to use the uh, sense for terminal sense wires here because with all the contacts and everything else there's not uh, you know, there's not a huge real advantage there to actually doing that. As long as you've got the thick gauge wire and keep it short should be reasonable. But uh, yeah, anyway, because battery holders aren't terrific. Um, you really need uh, like to sense each individual battery. Um, so I'm going to discharge two at a time this time instead of all of them in series. I was trying to save time last time and we sort of come a gutter on uh, two of the brands there which are, which reversed uh, charge. But anyway, they have been discharged and yes, these ones <laughs> heaps of comments on the previous video. Yes, as I said in my main channel video I will be putting this batch of batteries with a, like a 100k resistor in parallel or whatever to give like 10 microamps uh, leakage current. So yes, these ones will actually have in, I'll do them in pairs because I have um, all these battery holders over here in pairs. So I'll do each brand, um, I'll discharge them in series like this. And even when you discharge them in series, there can be slight capacity differences uh, between one cell or the other. You know, the manufacturing bell curve, these even from the same packet, which these are, um, they may not, you know, one may be slightly, uh, have slightly higher ESR than the other one, and it, it can be a problem. So anyway, I don't want to discharge these slowly. Um, so I'm going to, uh, in this particular case, I'm going to do uh, 500 milliamps to make it uh, faster to actually discharge these because I've got 13 different pairs to do. I'm going to set my stop voltage. Uh, I'm not going to set a uh, stop capacity. I'm only going to set a stop voltage, normally 1.4 volts. So it's that's actually on the the terminals here, not actually on uh, the batteries themselves. So um, anyway, when you're discharging at a higher current like this, which you know, five, half an amp is pretty high. Like you really don't want to go over one amp with double A's because the ESR just sort of kills you. So, uh, but when you're discharging at higher currents like this, uh, yeah, you might think, okay, 1.4 volts, that's uh, 0.7 volts per cell. You think, oh, we're really killing these things, but we're actually not, there will still be, a fair amount of capacity in these, maybe 10%, 5% uh, percent capacity, may, maybe even like 10%, depending on uh, the intricacies of uh, the losses in the contacts and, and sensing voltage and everything else. So uh, when you discharge these at the higher current, uh, you will actually get, uh, you won't be able to extract as higher uh, capacity from the battery as you would at lower current. So there will be, so, you know, a, a significant amount of uh, capacity left in these things. And as I mentioned in the previous one, somebody has actually pointed out a research paper uh, on uh, leakage of batteries and has shown that um, apparently this paper effectively says that if you uh, discharge them at a high current and then just leave them, uh, that they stand the most chance of uh, leaking. So in this particular case, um, I'm going to put a load on these ones. The other ones that I did in the previous video, they will just be sitting there with no load. So I'm, that's why I'm doing two different types of loads, just to see if it makes a difference. Anyway, so, uh, and, and somebody mentioned on the previous video that, oh, I need to collect better data and stuff like this. This is not about collecting data on battery capacity or anything else. This is simply discharging batteries to, you know, like 90% discharging them or something just so that 
the pr more pressure can build up in the batteries because they're more susceptible to leaking apparently when they're mostly discharged. So that's the whole idea. So I'm going to do 13 sets here. Um, so let's whack it on. I've got half an amp. Uh, 1.4 volts stop voltage, uh, which is total, so 0.7 volts per cell nominal. I won't worry about timers or anything else, so let's switch that on. 3.23 volts open circuit, and we'll see that drop very quickly at half an amp. There we go, yeah, <laughs> it drops a lot straight away. So there we go, we've got our half amp there, and uh, that could take a while, one milliamp hour total. And the good thing about this, uh, the battery capacity app here is that it just switches off when it gets to 1.4 and tells you the total capacity and the total time. Fantastic, so yeah, I won't bore you with the details, but I'm gonna do this for 13, lucky 13 set of batteries. And uh, then I will modify all of my uh, uh, battery holders back here to add like a 100K load across uh, uh, each one and oh that's actually no uh, 200 probably should get 200k if I because they'll be nominally they, these will recover to like 1.2 1.3 volts even these will actually you know the voltage will actually recover a fair amount after you deep uh, discharge them like this so yeah they'll get back to easily over a volt um, so if I get two of those in series that's two volts I'm going to need 200k to get a nominal 10 microamps which is what I figure is a fairly typical standby power consumption for a particular product. You know, it can't be as high as, maybe I might, might use 100K, 20 microamps, meh, you know, uh, do it a bit more, maybe, but 100K, nice round value, so I might do that. Although I don't want to deplete my resources of 100K, uh, my stock of 100K resistors, so I might use like 110K or something like that. Anyway, these ones will have a light load over them. So, um, yeah, that's all for this video. And at the end of it, I, I won't bother showing you all the results from these. Um, I'll just simply uh, put them, uh, load across them, whack them in a box. And if there's any updates, um, yeah, on the second channel here. Catch you next time.